Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Pete Frizella. I'm a developer advocate on the Google Analytics team. Uh, today, I just wanted to give you a quick update. There was a quite a few things that happened in the last month or so. And I thought it'd be good to share the highlights with you and give you an overview of all the great new things that we have available for you uh, in Google Analytics. So the first thing I wanted to start with was the Dimensions and Metrics Explorer. We just released a new version of this tool um, just a few days ago, actually. And it adds a whole bunch of new features. Um, so let's just go right to the tool, and we'll take a look at what some of these great features are. So this is actually coming live from the internet right now. This is what's deployed and currently available for you to take a look at. Uh, so there's a few new things that we added to this tool. Um, so one, this, this, what this tool does is it gives you an overview of all the dimensions and metrics that are available in the core report and API. Uh, it helps you understand what the valid combinations are, uh, the descriptions of these different dimensions and metrics, provides a whole bunch of information uh, for help, to help you navigate uh, all these different uh, data points. So one of the first new things that we added was an ability to switch modes. So prior to this update, um, there was only really one way to look at this data, which was the API names. And now we have two additional modes uh, that are web and app. So if I go here and ex expand all of these, you'll see this is the list of all the dimensions and metrics that we have. And now when I switch to web mode, we'll now get a full list of all the different dimensions and metrics, but also include web names. So this is brand new. And we also have app, of course. Um, so you can come here and try this out and give it, give it a whirl yourself. Um, there's also a new feature here called um, only allow uh, in segments. So this will only show you dimensions and metrics uh, that are allowed in segments. So if you click the checkbox, it will eliminate any dimensions and metrics that can't be used in segments. And of course, you could do search. Uh, capability. So if you're only looking for specific dimensions or metrics, uh, you can definitely search for those, and they'll automatically adjust the. Um, on. It'll automatically adjust the search results based on those uh, based on your query. Secondly, there's another big feature around the detailed view. So if you click into any dimension or metric, you'll see a very detailed view of that particular dimension or metric. So for example, we now include the web name, the app name, and we also have these additional attributes like data type and whether it's allowed in segments. And if you go to the top, we can see how this might look for something that's very detailed. So for example, the custom variables or columns, for example, has uh, quite a few different attributes, things like index range and the premium index range. So all this information is now available through this tool, um, and it's a lot faster. Since it, once it loads, you're basically not, you don't have page reloads anymore. It just automatically will load, load different views uh, very quick. You can see how quick it is to switch between uh, these different views. And then finally, uh, this has all been updated to use the meta Metadata API. So we really recently relaunched this Metadata API uh, back in uh, early, uh, early October. And this gives programmatic access to, access to dimensions and metrics. And this tool is actually built using this API. So it, it automatically will update itself when we release new data. So that was the first update I wanted to share with you. The next one is the Query Explorer. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this tool. Um, it's a great way to explore your reporting data from the Core Reporting API. And it gives you access to uh, all of the dimensions and metrics. And you can query up to seven dimensions uh, and 10 metrics uh, in a query. So it gives you a lot of data that you can pull out of the Core Reporting API. So this is what it looks like. I think probably a lot of you are familiar with it. So let's just take a look at. Uh, the tool itself. This is another, again, a live, uh, live view. So I think this is um, something that you probably wouldn't notice that we've updated this, but um, some of you may have caught it. Um, but we've actually updated this tool to use the uh, metadata API. So again, this was a new API that we released, and it allows programmatic access to dimensions and metrics. Um, prior to this, the Query Explorer was using um, kind of a static way to, to bring in this data. And now it's actually all being dynamically loaded into the Query Explorer. So what you're going to notice is a little bit different from you guys is that you get a little bit more data for each particular dimension or metric. You'll see on the right-hand side uh, in this view, you'll see how it's changing uh, as we scroll over different dimensions and metrics. Uh, this is all actually being generated dynamically and coming from the metadata API. So the good thing for you guys is that it's given you a little bit more data, um, such as the data type and whether it's allowed in segments. So this information is now available uh, through the Query Explorer. And this is something that's new. It uh, wasn't really publicly announced or anything, but um, this is a great, great little update that gives you a little bit more information. And it's a good way to showcase how you can use the Metadata API. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of information, uh, such as dimensions or metrics, both of these tools really highlight how you can build these applications using the Metadata API. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely visit our uh, developer site and learn a little bit more about that API and, and it, how it works. Great. So those are two quick ones, um, but pretty, pretty big changes for some of you, I think. 
um, in terms of getting that access to all the co-reporting data. So let's go back into the presentation. A new parameter that we introduced into the core reporting API um, this past month, um, it's called the sampling level. And this is kind of an effort to bring the core reporting API to be a little bit more consistent uh, with the experience that you have in the web interface, for example. And this is kind of important. Um, for so some of you, if you've probably been in the web interface, you've done a report, maybe a custom report, or some, seen some query, and you'll notice that it says that it's a sampled, um, it's actually sampled based on a certain number of visits, right? And if you click this little, um, this little icon in the top right-hand corner, you get this drop-down, and you're actually able to like, slide this, this little control back and forth to either go for faster processing or higher precision. So this actually controls the sampling rate um, for your particular query. This uh, was not available in the Core Point API prior to this update. Uh, and now we've added a new parameter that brings it kind of in consistency, uh, this consistency across the two. So what does this actually mean? Um, so from your perspective, if you're querying using the Core Point API, there's now this new parameter called sampling level, which you are able to set when you make a request to the Core Point API. And this is, again, very consistent with what you see in the web interface. So you can set it at three different levels. One is faster, or you can use the default value, or you can use higher precision. So default is, if you don't provide this, this query parameter, um, it will just use a default value, which is what would be the same as what you would see in the web interface. If you use, and then you can also set it to faster or higher precision. This is also important. Um, we get a lot of requests from people or, or questions from people around uh, their queries not matching the results that they see in the web interface. Um, and there's usually two main reasons why this happens, uh, why these requests are not the same. Uh, one is that either the actual query is a little bit different. So there's some queries in the UI that uh, cannot be reproduced through the API. Uh, and that would result in a different result, um, a different response from the core open API. So you might have different numbers for certain queries. Uh, the other reason why you might get different uh, responses from the core point API is because of the sampling level. Uh, and prior to this, this query parameter being available, there was really no way for you to set the sampling level in the core point API. Um, so it was harder to get it matching to match what you would see in the web interface. Right? So this brings it back in parity now. And uh, definitely, if you use this um, query parameter, you'll see the response that you get back from the core point API is just a little bit different and includes a couple new parameters for you. Um, so what, what will happen is you make the request, you set the sampling level, and in your response, you'll see these, these different um, fields, these different properties that are now available. One is the contained sampled data. And this just lets you know, and this isn't new, but this lets you know whether the response that you got contained data that was sampled or not. All right? So this has always been there. It's nothing new. Um, but what is new is we've added two different properties here uh, to give you additional information about the sampling that took place. The first one is the sample size. The sample size just indicates uh, how many visits were actually used um, to calculate this particular uh, data that you're seeing that's been returned back from the core report API. And the sample space uh, lets you know what was the total number of samples that were actually available to make this, uh, to make this query. So for example, there might have been 21 million uh, sessions or samples available. We only use, in this example, 385,000 of those. To, make, to, to get you get the data you need and respond that back to you. So the reason we do this is it's, it's a lot quicker to bring back uh, data. And uh, st statistically, it actually is very, um, it's very close to correct, uh, the correct responses that you would get for the larger sample size. Um, but it just makes it a lot quicker and gives you uh, reports very quick. Um, so these two numbers are new. And a lot of you have asked for this data uh, because it helps you, again, bring consistency between the web interface and the core report API. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you've used the web interface, you would see this kind of result. Uh, you would have this little uh, tooltip or notification uh, when you have a sample report. And it would show you this report is based on this number of visits. And it give you a percentage. Uh, and this just lets you know that the, the report was sampled. And this is kind of what we're using um, to calculate this data. So let's see how this would apply to these new fields that we have through the core report API. So one, the contained sample data is kind of equivalent to seeing this little notification bar. So this gives you the same indication that the data that you're, that you're looking at right now is sampled. Right. The other one's pretty easy. We have the sample size. Uh, and this corresponds to that particular number you would see in the web interface, which is the number of visits that the report is based on. So these are very consistent now between the two. And then finally is that you may want to be able to calculate this 1.77%. So you want to calculate this kind of coverage or percentage of visits that are used. And we can use the sample space to figure out this calculation. 
And it's quite straightforward. We know the sample size and we know the sample space. So it's just a matter of dividing these two um, to get your percentage of visits that are used. Right? So with, these, uh, with this new parameter and these new properties that we have available in the response, you can be consistent with, uh, if you're building an application and you want to be able to expose this information to your, your users, uh, these properties allow you to do that. Another thing that we uh, released this past month was relative dates in the core report and API. Um, so again, this was another feature that was uh, requested by um, some users. Um, and it actually is pretty powerful. And it, and it helps if you're trying to build reports that are kind of ongoing. Uh, and you want them to be relative to a specific date, for example. Um, so how this works is whenever you make a, a request to the core report and API, there's always two parameters that you, uh, so there's a couple parameters you need to provide. And two of them are the start date and the end date. So what period of data, um, what period of time would you like this data for? Um, so the acceptable values were always, have always been, of course, the year, month, day, uh, which is what everybody has been using for uh, since the inception of the Core Report API. Um, and we've added three new different values that you can provide uh, in place of this standard year, month, day. Uh, they are today, yesterday, and end days ago. So with these three values, you can basically create any query you'd like with relative dates. Um, for any period of time. Right? It gives you that kind of flexibility um, to do that. Um, and I'll show you what that means in a second here. So for example, just say you have a report, and you don't want it to be a set date. You just want it to be every seven days. So anytime you query for this data, you just want the last seven days worth of data. Right? So with these new parameters, you could set the start date to, for example, seven days ago, and the end date to yesterday. And this would give you the last seven days starting from yesterday. I and mean, it would always give you that last seven days uh, no matter when you query it, right? Because we're now we're using relative dates. For again, last 10 days would be very similar. Um, the end date would be today, for example, and the start date would be nine days ago. So you got to be careful here. And something you want to make note of is that when you're looking for something like the last 10 days, uh, and you're including today, intuitively you might think that it's 10 days ago, but it's actually nine days ago to actually include that full 10 days. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're making these queries and setting them up. Make sure you're actually getting the correct number of days that you think you're getting uh, based on the end days ago um, uh, parameter. And then finally, for just a simple example, but if you're going to do today now, you can do something like you always want today's data. Then you would just start the stand, uh, set the start, start date to today and the end date to today. And you would get the data always from today. Another thing, the important thing to note is that this is based on the time zone that's set in your uh, particular profile. So if you are set for Pacific time in your profile, these relative dates will be resolved to real dates based on that, that time zone. So just something to keep in mind again. Um, that's, that's how it works. Pretty straightforward, uh, simple feature, but um, definitely something that gives you more flexibility in terms of how you want to set up your reports. And then recently, we re released some new data in the Core Report API. Another, again, feature that uh, are data points that people were asking for for quite some time. Uh, it was one of our top feature requests on our issue tracker was AdSense data. So we've added a whole bunch of new AdSense metrics. Um, you can visit the Dimensions and Metrics Explorer to look at those, uh, those metrics and see what they are and learn more about them. Um, we also added a few more time dimensions, um, GA, GA ISO year and ISO year, year ISO week. And again, these work with the I ISO week um, dimensions. And they should be used together and not used with the Gregorian uh, calendar entries like GS, uh, GA, I, uh, GA week should not be used with these ones. Uh, but again, these were features that people have been asking for uh, for a long time. So if you didn't know we released those, you can definitely take a look at, at those now. And then finally, we added a new AdWords, um, the Ad Keyword Match Type, which basically shows you which uh, keyword types were applied or which match types were applied to a specific keyword. Uh, again, these are all available through the Dimensions and Metrics Explorer. You can check them out. And, uh, and they're available, of course, in the Core, Explorer, Core Query Explorer. So you can go in there uh, and try the data out and see what it looks like. All right, so that, this, is, this is kind of a, a wrap up. Those are the big features we released this past month. There was a lot of data um, that we released. There was some new dimensions in Metrics Explorer and the Query Explorer. And of course, a new sampling level parameter. Um, all of this can be uh, learned. You can learn more about this from the Core Report API reference. Uh, and of course, you can visit the tools themselves uh, at, the, at the resources that we provided here. And then also, going forward, how do you state the date? So we released a lot of things in the API. Um, developer relations, we do our best to make sure you guys understand uh, what's coming out and, and what features uh, might be relevant to you. Uh, but you can always visit our blog at analytics.blogspot.com and get updates there. 
We have our Google Analytics uh, G Plus profile. And of course, you can follow me at Pete Frizzella. And I usually will post things that we, that we release so everybody can learn about them. Um, and then, of course, I really recommend you subscribe to our change logs. We have a great set of change logs, uh, especially if you're using the Co-Report API and the Management API. Um, we have some detailed uh, change logs for you. And you can subscribe to them uh, through RSS feeds. Um, or you can just visit the page itself and take a look. Great. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, it was quick, but the update has been completed. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.